Hi there, Chris here. Um, this isn't a, a picking video. This is a video about how not to brick your favorite locks. Um, in my organizing and going through my locks and the drawers and all that, um, I found this in a bag and it was shoved all the way in the back uh, of one of the bottom drawers and I had forgotten about it. Um, this was actually the first uh, Ruko type padlock I ever bought and um, it's, it's, it's like my all time favorite one of that style. And there's the bidding on the key. It's one I have never gotten on um, camera because it's been probably for six months it's been bricked and now it's unbricked, thank goodness. But what I had done um, was I had gutted it. I, had, I was practicing with it and I was got it so I could do the six pins and um, I had done something that you don't want to do. Come on. When I put it back together, I didn't take this screw out. And the screw somehow, because when you put it back together, you're kind of threading this thing in because it has one of these little C-clips that pops out, which is my favorite uh, way to the favorite C-clip type thing. And you put it back in and, and that screw was still in that hole, but it wasn't screwed down and I shoved the shackle down and it trapped the screw. And I could not, it, it trapped the screw so this was out like this, so it wasn't actuating the, the lock. Um, and I tried a bunch of stuff and it was, you know, it upset you to brick one of your favorite locks, especially when you're close to getting it on camera. So I put it in a bag and I put it um, in the bottom of the one, back of the bottom of one of the drawers. And somehow <laughs> in its its life back there with getting moved or shoved around and, and uh, the drawer opening and closing, the screw dislodged itself and I thought, oh, there's that lock. And I used the key, and lo and behold, it, it unlocked. So it is now unbricked, which is, is wonderful. So the very last thing you do when you're putting padlocks, guttable locks back together, but this type, is to put in your cylinder make sure it works in here because it's key retaining i think you have to check the little ball up that it will actuate the ball whoops didn't get it there we go um check that it works hold everything together then the very last thing you put your screw in there so that's really important. That's, that's one way to brick a lock. Another way to brick a lock is while you're gutting it, not using a shim. I mean, I always use a shim. And if, if you watch my videos where I will gut a lock, you'll see the shim usually looks like this because it's, it's getting used and used and used. So always use a shim when you're sliding in and out when you're gutting locks. Another thing, never, <laughs> never, and I, I, I rarely do this, but I used to do it. I would watch videos while I was putting locks back together. Well, it's really not a good idea because you can forget something. Um, here's an example. Beautiful American lock. Or 3700 series. Uh, it has got a you know core to beat the band. It's an ASA. I don't know if it's a twin ten, but it's an ASA twin. And these these uh, padlocks are very cool because they'll take these and they have they come with a kit. Uh, you could buy them. You could buy these 
without any cord. They'll come with a little kit, this little kick holder thing. And they also come with a couple of different actuators. And this style, you see, just rides on the back of this. So if you forget to put this back and you screw it all together and you don't test it, what happens? <laughs> you don't have an actuator <laughs> to unlock this shackle and you, you can't get there from here. So really the only way to get this one out, because it does have the screw holding this, would be to take another one of these and calculate where that screw head is and try and drill the screw head out. This is not an easy thing to do. First you gotta go through the brass, then you gotta go through the steel. So, yeah, don't be doing other things when you're putting your locks back together or you could end up with a really nice padlock, but even a nicer core that it doesn't matter how good a picker you are, <laughs> you're not going to get the open. Um, that's another way to brick locks. Um, are all padlocks brickable? No, here's one that isn't. And this is a very cool padlock. This is not brickable. This actually <laughs> is not a padlock, but it holds... Um, it holds matches. It's really just a match holder. And it's a little chub, chub product. And these are very cool. It has a little strike on the bottom. These are not gettable. And subject to, <laughs> so therefore they're not brickable. But that's a very cool little one. Another way to brick a lock is the very first American lock I got um, one of these, what are they, S100s? I don't recall. Is to go along your merry way, picking, picking, picking. And you see it has this limiter plate on the bottom. These are not guttable. So if you sort of brick this one, it's tough to get them back. You can. But say you're picking, 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 picking. And you get it to turn and your tension wrench flies out, which happens occasionally. And so you turn it, so you stick a pick in, and if you turn it the wrong way, the drivers are gonna fall down into the, <laughs> fall down and it'll get bricked in this position. And boy, you have to do some fancy kind of using your picks and probes and everything to, to get it unbricked. So that can happen. Um, Southampton Lock Picking Club sent me one of these. And I believe I picked it on camera. But there again, I over-rotated it. And I'm not sure if it was this one. I think I may have eventually got it out. But you see that limiter? That's there for a reason. <laughs> a reason. If you turn that core around, drivers fall into the the chamber and block it, and of course you're you're bricked. So always kind of when you're when you're gutting and, and reassembling, always kind of follow these rules. Um, I think I think that's it. It's just about paying attention to what you're doing, and I'm so glad to get this one back unbricked. Because like I say, it's it's my very first Ruko style lock, and um, it wasn't cheap. It actually, I actually bought it uh, on eBay from a guy named Papa Glub. Now I know 98% of you are going, who's Papa Glub? Well, maybe Murloc might remember him from watching Buzz, uh, Lock Picking Lawyers videos, because uh, Papa Glub would often send Lock Picking Lawyer locks, and also Bosnian Bill. And I might be mistaken about that, but before he sold this one, I believe he sent it to Bo Bosnian Bill to pick, 
and I believe Bosnian Bill picked it, or one from Papa Glove, just like this. Um, Papa Glove, I don't, I don't know what he's up to now. We're talking years ago. I mean, when I bought this lock, this is probably three years ago. So, Don's locks might remember Papa Glove. Rookie lock might remember Papa Glove. Anybody else, put it in, put in the comments. Oh yeah, I remember him, but you you have to go back about three years. Murloc, I'm thinking maybe. Um, maybe Albert LaBelle. So anyway, I guess the, the thing is have some rules that you strictly follow in your lock lab about shimming, about disassembly and reassembling while you're not multitasking, doing other, watching other videos and things like that. So I hope that is helpful to prevent somebody from, even if it just pre prevents one person from bricking one of their favorite locks, um, I'll be very happy. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the comments and the subscribes and, and everything. And um, we will see you next time.